Welcome again to a new video on intellectual property Sri Lanka. Um, this video covers uh, quite a number of cases uh, coming from 1930s to the modern time. Actually, during this time, there have been a number of laws that were, you know, uh, connected to intellectual property in Sri Lanka, culminating in Intellectual Property Act 2003, the modern law. So even the past acts have reference uh, to the scenarios today and could easily be used in a modern action. The first case to be discussed would be Lever Brothers, now Unilever, versus uh, Ringanada Pillay, long time ago legal action. It was uh, a case connected to the, okay, so uh, Lever Brothers had been into the, uh, have been into the soap industry for such a long time. So their lux was uh, within, our market space for the last 40, 50 years. In the early days, uh, the particular case came up. Um, Ringanada Pili, the particular company involved, uh, imported a soap uh, named Rex into Sri Lanka, uh, which resulted in Lever Brothers taking legal action against Rex because the word Rex um, in the soap cake was actually made in Japan. Um, However, uh, you know, the particular floral line uh, printed or imprinted on the soap cake, cake or soap, was very much similar to the Lux uh, cake, uh, the floral line that is. So that uh, made the court determine that Rex soap was deceptively similar and it could deceive or mislead the customer. Really, so that resulted in uh, the typical action in um, uh, intellectual property uh, case would be issue of an injunction preventing banning the company from doing either advertising or sales or, or whatever with regard to the, uh, the product which is not allowed. So the court issued an injunction, permanent one, banning soap which is named Rex uh, from being sold in Sri Lanka. Deceptive similarity was the reason. There have been quite a number of cases with regard to tea in Sri Lanka, and this is one. Uh, Hiptulaboy Company Limited, which has been involved in exporting tea out of Sri Lanka for such a long time, and Stazen's export, a rather recent arrival into the tea industry in the 1980s, uh, the Rabea tea uh, was a known brand by Hiptulaboy for such a long time in, in their exports particularly to the Middle East. Um, Rabea, in their Roman characters, uh, was, uh, was utilized uh, by uh, Hepto Leboy in their sales. And then uh, Spassons came up with a quite similar branding called Child Rabea. For, for that was in Arabic. Uh, you know, letters used were in Arabic, but again in the legal action, uh, the court agreed. Uh, that there was a deceptive similarity uh, in the use of word Shire Rabea by uh, Stassens, uh, which should make the customer uh, misidentify the product as a Rabea one. So it doesn't obviously have to be in the wording itself, uh, the meaning, uh, the message it conveys, right? so uh, sight of it. So. There are a lot of factors that the court would determine as relevant uh, in deciding whether a brand name is deceptively similar to another one. Another permanent injunction issued, this case uh, came up in the Court of Appeal, in fact. The original court, district court, didn't want to agree because, okay, the characters are different. Rabia was in Roman characters. Uh, Child Rabia, printed by Stassens, was in... Um, uh, rabbit characters, but Court of Appeal disagreed. They said there was a disciplinary similarity. Again, another one against uh, Stassens, this time by the James Finlay, related to tea. James Finlay had been uh, uh, in the business with Cleopatra brand of tea. And Stassens also came up with a similar Cleopatra brand of tea. Uh, Cleopatra cannot be owned by any company. That's a historical figure. But the design and the particular aspect of the tumbler used by uh, Stazens appeared to be deceptively similar to the, uh, the brand uh, 
in um, Finlay, where there was a tumbler involved. So not all of it was similar deceptively, but particular aspect of the tumbler used, um, you know, Stazen's being rather deceptively similar to James Finlay made the court, court of appeal again determine, all right, Stazen's had done um, infringement of a brand violation or a trademark violation. Again, it goes to show all of the trademark does not need to be copied for it to be an infringement, an infringement, even a part of it, a significant part of it could be taken. And here, Stassen's kind of argued, telling that the Tumblr is typical to the tea industry. Uh, you know, it's a known generic name, you know, sort of a sign or a mark to the tea industry, which is disagreed by the Court of Appeal. There are generic um, um, trademark uh, signs which could be utilized, but Tumblr was not one according to the Court of Appeal. So uh, let's go for another one. This was um, regarding a song, or actually the music score uh, sung by uh, City Fernando. The name of the song was Pin Siduan. You can check it in YouTube. Um, in a latter day teledrama called Mal Kakula, uh, the producers use this music score uh, without the permission of the family of uh, City Fernando. City Fernando passed away uh, in 1970s. So this uh, teledrama, if my memory serves correct, came in the 2000s. So the use of the music score of City Fernando's piece in Pinsinduani in Mal Kakula teledrama without permission was considered as a violation, copyright violation by uh, the directors, the starting in directors having to pay compensation to, uh, you know, the widow and the family of uh, City Fernando. City Fernando would not have registered his uh, song or anything. You do not need to register uh, to obtain copyrights, the movies, dramas, you know, even photos, articles, they give automatic copyrights. Any copying of uh, content in a modern day entertainment piece, maybe a movie, maybe a music or something, song or something, must recognize in the credits who the original authors are and must get the permission from them by paying the royalties. Oh, at least uh, with their permission. This was uh, connected to Shy FM, connected to ABS, modern day Hiru uh, channel. Um, there was an employee in the company who uh, resigned from the company, so an ex-employee, uh, and registered a name called Shy FM uh, with the, you know, the trademarks office. But later, ABC Network filed legal action against him by telling that he stole a brand name that we decided, that means ABC decided for themselves. And before ABC registered it, this particular employee had uh, registered it himself um, without informing ABC or uh, just soon after leaving the company. So for this, ABC took action. And by that time, the name was already registered before ABC tried to register itself. But the court of appeal was you know, ready to accept. It was an intellectual property stolen literally from the true owner, although the true owner has not registered the trademark. So the court granted the rights to ABC to use the word shy FM. Even today, you do see the shy FM. The employee, the ex-employee who registered it before ABC did not get the right as to the court decision. This is a rather age-old case coming from the 1950s uh, with regard to the shorthand. Uh, shorthand is not exactly that much in the usage, but still you do see uh, the typical uh, the writer or the secretary would have a decent skill in shorthand, either in English or Sinhala. So uh, Austin Cantor, he was the first to develop the Sinhala shorthand uh, called the Cantor system. Later, um, Vijay Singha Mahanamaheva developed what you call the Vijaya system. Um, much later than Austin. Um, 
but both of them use the Greg system, the British Greg system to develop the Sinhala system of shorthand. Both of them are very popular in the 1960s. However, uh, Austin Canty took legal action against Vijay Singha Mahanamaheva for copying his system um, as a, you know, a copyright violation by uh, Vijay Singha Mahanamaheva. But in this particular action, the Court of Appeal didn't want to agree with uh, Austin Cantor because both of them heavily depended on the Greg system. And the Greg system was not one that either belonged to Austin Cantor or Mahanamaheva. It's true that there were characters, uh, characteristics similar to Cantor system utilized by the Vijaya system. But however, the fact that a majority of the content was taken from the Greg system by both of them resulted in Austin Craig can't have been unable to take action against uh, Vijay Singha because he could not prove that uh, it was authentic. It was his original work. If what you have in your uh, creation or, or system or, or writing or whatever is not original, then it's not easy to defend yourself in an intellectual property action when your work is almost copied by somebody else. This is uh, a case with regard to violation of the photography. So basically stealing of photo photographs. Um, a photographer called Amara Singh uh, took some uh, highly painful photos during the 1983 July riots, which resulted in the deaths of so many Tamil people in Sri Lanka, along with the destruction of their properties. So his photos were one of the most prime evidences uh, used in articles as evidence of uh, the criminalities occurred. Um, he was uh, those days working for the at the newspaper, um, but uh, at the newspaper no longer functions today. Uh, the rights to the photographs belong to Amara Singh because he was the one who took the photographs. Later, Associated Newspapers of Ceylon, that's uh, Daily News or Lake House, published some of the photos without recognizing Amara Singh's rights. Oh, Amara Singh's ownership. Um, you know, in this particular case, when uh, the case went all the way to the Supreme Court, uh, ANCL, I think the Lake House publishers, uh, tried to defend themselves by telling that the photographs were owned by the at the newspaper, so not by the photographer. Supreme Court disagreed. Supreme Court said stated that you know the photographer has at least the moral rights, if not the economic rights. Uh, and in this case, consent uh, case, Supreme Court said that he has the total rights to the photos and publishing of these photos without recognizing, without getting his permission uh, or without paying him royalties was a violation of intellectual property. So NCL was ordered to pay back uh, to Amra Singha on the violation infringement involved. And this one, Lalita Sarachandra versus Upul Shanta Sannaskala. A very interesting case. In this case, what happened was the particular defendant, a rather popular, very popular tuition teacher in the yesteryears, he in his A level tuition class um, photocopied a government issued book um, called the Maname Course Workbook and issued it to the students. It was a government printed uh, uh, Maname Course Workbook. But then he printed it under his name and said, you know, all right reserved, copyright 1999, Upul Shanta Sanaskal at the back of the book and issued to all his children. He had lots of children during his uh, uh, heydays in his uh, Singhala uh, class known as Ape Singhala Panthi in those days. And then the widow and the family of uh, uh, Professor Idiri Vira Sarachandra took legal action against uh, um, Upul Shanta Sanaskal demanding a hefty fee as compensation for violating uh, the copyrights that were rightfully belonging to them. True that the government book was the one that was published, but the fact that uh, um, he's the one who photocopied it and gave to many hundreds of or thousands of his students and in printing in every, each and every book that he photocopied as all rights reserved, copyright 1999, Upul Shanta Sanaskala, made the court be convinced that this was a copyright violation. 
by Kupul Shantasana said, of course, this case did not see the end of it, uh, a determinant like, to my understanding, the case was settled out of court. So, but anyway, the court determined that it was a uh, violation of the copyrights. This one is a Sumit Research and Holdings Limited, Elite Radio, Light Radio and Elite Engineering Company Limited. An interesting case. Sumit was a well, has been a well-known brand in Sri Lanka, especially with regard to the grinders and the lot. Um, they worked with the Sri Lankan company, um, uh, which used to be their uh, importers of the products. Um, so the particular Sri Lankan company imported uh, the Sumit brand and sold them in Sri Lanka. Um, so uh, company name was, uh, uh, forgot the name of the company, Elite Radio, I'm sorry, Elite Radio. Uh, later what Elite Radio did was, uh, they made a different agreement with another company, SMPL, and got SMPL to make uh, grinders in the Sumit name. S U M W E T printed in each, each grinder maintained man, manufactured by SMPL. SMPL did not have any connection to the original Sumit name. Another aspect was uh, Elite registered the Sumit name as one of their trademarks in Sri Lanka. So Elite uh, stopped dealing with Sumit Research and Holdings India, but uh, started importing Sumit name branded products, especially grinders, uh, blenders from this SMPL India and sold them in Sri Lanka, okay, with the Sumit name. Then Sumit Research and Holding Limited took legal action first against SMPL India and won the legal action for utilizing their brand name without their permission and then took second follow-up action in Sri Lanka against Elite Radio for again, trademark infringement. Yes. Sumit had uh, been registered as a trademark belonging to SMPL, but the Sri Lankan court uh, determined that, yes, it was a uh, violation of a foreign company's trademark who had the rightful ownership to Sumit. Sri Lankan company lost the case uh, resulting in uh, Sumit India being able to uh, obtain a permanent injunction against uh, uh, Elite Radio against uh, selling these uh, products under Sumit name and obtaining compensation as well. Yet another one, uh, Joe Abekram versus uh, Kapila Tissa Kumara Kotalawala. The case is connected to uh, Saki Sande alias uh, produced by him. Um, what happened was uh, his extremely popular uh, teledrama, this is very popular teledrama those days, was uh, pirated as per the court decision by the said defendant and sold specific, particularly in other countries without being uh, obtaining permission from Joe Abe Vikram, who had the right to the particular uh, teledrama. Colombo Commercial High Court. Now the Commercial High Court is a place that the Intellectual Property Act, uh, you know, defines as the court that should go for at least a high-end uh, intellectual property legal action. So most of the intellectual property cases begin from the Colombo Commercial High Court. In the early days, of course, there were a lot of cases heard at uh, district court as well. But now it's mostly the Colombo Commercial High Court. High Court. This is a rather recent case. There are the court, uh, Commercial High Court determined that the particular defendant, Kisa Kumar Kotalawala, uh, has violated, infringed upon uh, Joabe Vikram's copyrights by unauthorized copying of his teledrama. This one, Wacom International versus Maharaja Organization and Company Limited. A highly pertinent case, Maharaja came with their MTV in the early 90s and got the registration in Sri Lanka as well for MTV. Initially, uh, MTV was the brand name used by uh, the modern, um, you know, the, the news, uh, sorry, the radio channel and the news channel. But then uh, music television, uh, which is an American registered entity, globally popular, took legal action against MTV, Maharaja 
Organization Limited MTV for violating their copyrights um, for unfair competition and yes, uh, having a brand name with the deceptive similarity resulting in Maharaja agreeing uh, to give up on the name MTV completely and utilize different uh, other brands like the Channel Plus, uh, Serasa and others. So uh, again, the Sri Lankan court accepted. It's another situation of a Sri Lankan court accepting that a foreign registered brand, a well-known brand could not be violated in Sri Lanka. And incidentally, music television was also a brand name registered in Sri Lanka. They first uh, showed uh, some of their programs on the TNL music television. Um, but uh, the fact that it was registered by Music TV long time ago in US was a pertinent issue for the courts to determine that the Maharaja has done a product violation or are technically an intellectual property copyright violation. This uh, with regard to a case filed by the Society D Products Nestle actually against uh, Multitech Sri Lanka um, importing a brand of uh, sweets or chocolate beans called Sweeties. And here the court was convinced that uh, the name used as Sweeties and the shape of the container and the color of the Sweeties and all that was deceptively similar to the established brand and the trademark Smarties made by Nestle. It was an imported brand from Australia and they rebranded as Sweeties in Sri Lanka, but uh, the court was not convinced. Court determined that it's a uh, violation of the trademark uh, rights of Nestle company by Multitech company. This was pretty much uh, famous as the Venival was uh, a popular case. Actually, the Sudeshi was the first to came up with, actually they invented the Venival, so they must be the first in the world to do so and the greenish uh, little cake of uh, uh, soap, rather darkish green, with an identically uh, greenish uh, uh, cover, wrapping, came as, uh, okay, Apsara Venival. But later, um, Vendol also came up with the soap, uh, very much similar, same size, same shape, almost the same wrapper and named it Apsara Venival. Venival is the name that is, uh, you know, coming out of a, you know, herb, so no company can own it. One can argue that Apsara is a very common name as well. But uh, our court, the commercial Colombo, Colombo Commercial High Court was not convinced. They said the use of Apsara Venival by Vendol, uh, on a wrapper which looked identically similar to what was by Swadeshi uh, Industries was a trademark violation. And uh, Vendol had to desist from it and they actually changed their brand into Vendol Venival later, rather than moving from, yeah, uh, moving from Apsara Venival. The fact of the matter in Sri Lanka is a large number of copyright related violations do not uh, come to commercial high court. Lots of the copyright owners or the trademark owners are happy to take the case to the magistrate's court through the intellectual property office and in the case they are itself by obtaining a permanent injunction and maybe fines against the violators. Reason may be that uh, lots of these violators happen to be uh, rather smaller or mid-range uh, entities, businesses rather than the high-end businesses uh, who may not be able to pay up millions and millions of compensation. So the, uh, the trademark or the copyright, uh, intellectual property rights owners are happier obtaining an injunction of permanency and then um, fines against uh, uh, the violate, actually the fines go to the government, uh, you know, rather than taking a long-term legal action in the commercial high court. So much of violations with regard to uh, the IT, you know, I mean, pirating the CDs or the software and all, end up in the MCs due to this reason. 
actually uh, the rights owners have the right to take the legal action to the commercial court, but the, the quickness and the swiftness of decision making uh, uh, to this kind of violations in the MC may be making them happy rather than taking up uh, and fighting a private battle in the uh, commercial high court of uh, Colombo. Counterfeits also end up in the same way. One uh, rather known one was ICC World 2020 in 2011. You know, there was this particular company involved in uh, distributing uh, lots of pirated brands and magistrate court banned them from use. Again, pirates, uh, pirated use of Disney products. Again, resulted in a similar action by the magistrate court. So the magistrate court, uh, has uh, by and large function as an important case with regard to criminal law involving uh, copyright violations. And the Intellectual Property Act is clear on the amount of compensation, sorry, the fines uh, that could be levied against the copyright violator and the aspect of the permanent injunction being possible fast at the magistrate court may make uh, uh, the rights owners to utilize uh, that avenue rather than fighting uh, the case in the um, commercial high court. Of course, in the MC, the case is filed by the intellectual property uh, body of Sri Lanka. Yet another case, uh, this was not a case actually. Mercury was um, a well-known brand of spice uh, from the 1980s, early 1980s, based in the Naul Dambul area. Later only McDonald's entered Sri Lanka with their first uh, sales joint in Colombo. That was in 1988. McDonald's tried to prevent Mercury from registering their name, MC, as part of the world. But the intellectual property officer Sri Lanka refused to go, go for it because they had sufficient evidence to agree that uh, Mercury had uh, registered themselves long before McDonald's had done. So, um, that fact prevented McDonald's from claiming the right to the word MC uh, as a trademark that should belong to McDonald's. Intellectual Property Office did not agree. A similar case was fought uh, by uh, McDonald's against a Malaysian restaurant and yet again the Malaysian law uh, was on the side of uh, the Malaysian restaurant rather than uh, McDonald's because the differences in the industry and the dissimilarity in the type of businesses that you do may result in you not being able to claim your rights even if the name appear to be somewhat similar. So determining uh, the trademark rights as I discussed earlier also covers large area rather than just the, on the face or the prima facie look at the trademark. Um, see you another time.